everyone, Gandafax here for a 17th and brand new episode of our special edition Lore of the Universal Century. Today we're going back to the Zeta era in an attempt to answer a particular question, which is... Yep, in this video, we are going to explore the history of the Titan's favorite cockroach, its mechanical lore, variants, and extract every bit of mechanical knowledge we have on them so far. But let's start by the beginning. What is exactly the Gaptley? Labeled as the Eryx 110, the Gaptley was an exotic transformable mobile suit, deployed primarily by the Titans during the Grip's conflict. Like the Galbordi Beta, the Gaptley was industrially produced by the Federation Luna 2 facility, but quite unsurprisingly, its unique to say the least design wasn't just a mix between Federation and Xeon technologies. In fact, the Luna 2 facility had followed plans not from their own engineers, but from a brilliant mind airing from Jupiter, Paptimus Shiroko. Thus, the Gaptley was designed following Shiroko's own battle doctrine, which prioritized high mobility combined with EV firepower. To achieve this, the Gaptley made use of an exotic transformable frame, which enabled the mobile suit to switch into a particular mobile armor mode while only transforming the lower portion of the body, with the torso crouching before transforming. Since the Gaupley design integrated additional thrusters in the sleeves, this resulted in the thrusters completing the action of the other thrusters when in mobile armor mode, resulting in unprecedented mobility and a thrust comparable to the one displayed by transformable mobile armors. Even better, the feats of the mobile suit mode could reveal a pair of offensive clouds in mobile armor mode while keeping the calf thrusters pointing the rear of the machine, so the Gaptley gained powerful close-range abilities in mobile armor mode without having to compromise its embark and its mobility. But the mobility wasn't everything about the Gaptley. In fact, the design displayed EV firepower, through it being equipped with a Fedayan rifle, a dead copy of the Zeta Gundam beam rifle which had a high firing output and could also emit a beam bayonet or being used as a root grappling weapon. For close range combat, the Gaptley could count on a complement of four beam sabers, one for each end for dual wielding and two as spear if some sabers were destroyed. Aside these weapons, the Gaptley carried internally its own inbuilt arsenal, making the mobile suit even more versatile. This inbuilt arsenal notably included two shoulder mounted beam cannons with a power rating of 4.2 MW, usable in mobile suit and mobile armor mode alike, and which had a rotation radius of 180 degrees. And if you wondered what was that wonderful little sensor at the back of the Gaptley head, well, that wasn't a sensor, it was a 80mm Vulcan so best not try backstabbing such machine. All these powerful features combined together resulted in the Gaptley being an excellent machine, and in advance of Zeta, its mobile armor mode would even be considered the pinnacle of transformable designs in the World Titan's arsenal. Yet, the uniqueness of the Gaptley frame would prove to be a drawback in the end, and doom its mass production, with the model never leaving the limited production stage. But that's enough specs for today, let's get to our lore. The year is Universal Century 87, and in the Earth Sphere, the Grips War was raging. In this brotherly duel between Earth Federation affiliated factions, the Titans and the Ayug, a race to arm for transformable designs had started, with the mega corporation Anaheim Electronics casually making business with everyone. On the Titan side, things had been initially great when it came to transformable designs. Large machines known as transformable mobile armors such as the Ashimar or the Gapland were well implanted in the Titan's war efforts, 
and most importantly, designing transformable mechanisms for these kinds of machines was more or less a piece of cake for the Titan's engineers. Now, most engineers at that time had a wet dream, which was applying the same transforming designs to much smaller machines, mobile suits. However, they had quickly realized that using the same raw transformable mechanism wasn't possible on mobile suits because of the reduced size. Even worse, as seen with Anime Electronics Delta Gundam, the transformable frame needed to be intelligently designed, else the movable frame wouldn't handle the transformation. To solve this issue, the Titans had developed a next generation movable frame with the Gundam Mach 2. And while the AUG had stolen the units, the Titans still had the data and could now move to design their own first transformable mobile suit. Yet, having the movable frame wasn't enough, and when the Federation engineers attempted to create their first transformable mobile suit, they failed miserably. At that time, newly integrated Titans ace, Paptimus Shiroko, a man coming from the Jupiter sphere, returned to Earth and was solicited by Titan's high command to help design this transformable mobile suit. Shiroko was not just a space pimp and a powerful new type, he was also a brilliant mobile suit engineer, having personally designed and produced five mobile weapons, the PMX series. Among the PMX was notably the first of the line, the PMX-000 Mesala, a transformable mobile armor with outstanding abilities. Following design plans proposed by Shiroko, who took the Mesala as an inspiration, the Luna 2 facility eventually produced an exotic new design. They named the Eryx 110 Gaptley. The Gaptley was initially produced in a standard 3 units production, with all 3 units being assigned to the Dogose Gear and manned by Lieutenant Jared Mesa and his wingmate lover, Mawar Farao. During a first engagement against the Ayug, the Gapta Unit 1 and 2 were assaulted by Jared and Mawar, but Jared Unit was severely damaged in the skirmish and abandoned, later being destroyed while unmanned by a poly bay. Jared would then pick the third Gapta to replace Gapta Unit 1 he had lost, but he would end up keeping Unit 3 intact much longer. In Jared and Mauer ends, the two remaining Gapclays would prove themselves as deadly machines, participating in Operation Apollo and the Side 2 gassing operation. However, the Gapclay would run out of luck after yet another encounter with the Ayuk on transformable mobile suit, the Zeta Gundam. This resulted in a final standoff where a Jared unit was critically damaged and Mauer and Ed Gaptley sacrificed herself to protect Jared. After the loss of the three prototypes, enough data had been gained to start the mass production plan, but it soon became clear that this would never happen. In fact, despite all its qualities, the Gaptley was inherent to its exotic Jovian inspired design, and this design was extremely costly. Worse, the particular design of the transformable frame was absurdly complex, and so maintenance of such machine would prove to be a nightmare. This doomed the mass production of the Gaptley, and would cause the Titans to focus instead on another transformable design of Shiroku, the Ambra B. Nonetheless, it is rumored that up to two more additional Gaptleys were produced, so it did seem it at least got to limited production, with 5 units being produced in total. Before the mass production plan was shelved, Titan's engineers designed a Ewok version of the Gaptley, a machine known as the Eryx 110R Ukai. Equipped with a traditional radome for electronic warfare and a long nose camera, the Okai was supposed to be a high-performance scout for the Titans, who was planned to phase out the Ewok Zack. Aside the radom and camera, the other differences with the regular Gaptley would have been its rear transformable frame, which would have been enlarged 
and slightly improved propulsion systems. However, the Okai design was finalized only after the fateful Battle of Grips, and thus abandoned, ending the dreams of the Evo capable Gaplay almost at the same time the Titans collapsed. Still, the Gaplay was not finished. While the Gaplay wasn't going to be mass produced, the model was not useless at all to the Titans. With Luna 2 cancelling its production, the blueprints of the machine were instead transferred to another Titans affiliated facility, the Oakland Research Institute. At that time, Oakland was cooperating with the Augusta Labs, and thanks to such cooperation, they had finally created their own cyber new type, a girl named Rosweiss. Due to instability on low psychoist levels, Rosweiss was labeled UF unfinished, but was nonetheless deployed for active combat. Initially, Oakland had assigned her to the atmospheric flight version of the Isaac, the Vanagward, but her supervisor Dr. Loki realized her feelings for her friend Ernest McGuire, one of the lead characters of Advent of Zeta Traitor to Destiny, and decided to capitalize on this. On the doctor advice, Oakland decided to use the data they got from Luna 2 to create two mobile suits derived from the gap play. These twin mobile suits, designed to fight together, were the RX-110 and T-1 Gaplay Munin, and its sister unit, the RX-110 C Gaplay Again. Almost identical between them, these two units differ externally from the original Gaplay only through their head and paint gem, which was now mainly in the Titan standard blue colors. Yet, internally, it was a whole other story. As NT1 indicate, the Munin was a new type use machine exclusively meant for cyber new types. While it didn't install a psycho move, the machine received additional vernures for higher mobility, and it was internally optimized in order to increase the survivability of the cyber new type pilot, a stark departure from many cyber new type machines from its era. The head was also modified and notably featured a Gundam type dual camera instead of the original mono eye camera. On the other end, the Hugin was designed to be piloted by old type pilots and it was meant to support the Munin thanks to more advanced head sensors and an advanced Minovsky particle detector. The Hugin's most important asset was its armor frame which featured a dissolved quasi psychomo system named the Shaman Frame. A sort of psycho frame, but for the quasi psychomo the Shaman Frame encased the chips of the quasi psychomo which amplified the old type electric brainwaves and converted them in electronic signals into the armor frame, enabling the Huggin pilot to operate the mobile suit via suit alone. By having the Shaman Frame instead of a regular box type quasi psycho move, the Hugin could be kept at minimum weight and thus remain lighter for more mobility. The version of the Shaman Frame featured in the Hugin is actually the predecessor of the Shaman Frame of the Gundam School, and this makes the Munin not just a support machine, but also a test mobile suit for next generation features. The Manin and the Hugin were then respectively assigned to Cyber New Type Rosweiss and Ernest McGuire and shipped to space in order to support the Titans' war effort. But the data on the gap play wasn't just ended to Oakland. As the Grips War entered its final stages, the Titans' Compe Arsenal started designing a mobile suit meant to counter the Zeta Gundam and any would-be successors, and to achieve this, they extensively upgraded the Tier 6 Wonderworld with additional parts, turning it into the fearsome Advanced Wonderworld, more commonly referred as the Azanatlay 2. This machine could transform into its own custom mobile armor mode, and it was precisely the Gaffley own mobile armor mode which served as the main inspiration for this mode. Why? Well, as I said before, 
because it was the most stable mobile armor design available to the Titans, and so a good thing to copy paste. The Aznet Lay 2 would fight in the waning days of the Grips War, carrying on the will of the Gatley line each time it had to transform. In UC90, the Aznet Lay 2 remains were brought to Mars by Titan's remnants, before being sized by Rezion, who modified it into the Aznet Lay 2, giving it a new black pinchem in the process. Later on, the Aznet Lay 2 would be picked up by Rezion's supreme leader, Alicia Zabi, and extensively modified into a whole new different machine, the Re-Eyes. A fourth generation mobile suit, the Re-Eyes, also called Re-Ace, was the pinnacle of Rezion technology, featuring a transformable mode capable of self-sustained atmospheric reentry on Mars, a E-field generator granting it high defenses against beam weapons, and a psycho system, enabling Alicia to pilot the Re-Eyes remotely. As handled weapons, the Re-Eyes instead use a composite weapon which combine a shield booster with a long blade rifle of the TR-6 line. The result was a high-performance machine worthy of its pilot status as Supreme Leader on Mars. Funnily enough, if you look at the Re-Eyes, you will probably think it has nothing to do with the Gatling. But when you look at its transformable mode, you can clearly distinguish the lineage. What a glow up for the Gatling line, I guess it's the Martian gravity doing wonders. Yet, the Gatling future wouldn't be tied only to the Martian sphere. In UC94, Project Chimera, which developed new mobile suits using old Titans technologies, recovered at least one gap leg unit and reused its leg claws to serve as the new arms for the Violent Custom Unit 1. Unlike with the bound up parts using the Violent Custom, it is possible the claws came from spare parts rather than an actual gap leg unit, since the engineers of the Chimera project disapproved how having them blocked the violent custom from using regular weapons, which is why Unit 2 received N manipulators instead. Nonetheless, the violent custom Unit 1 would perform amazingly, and during the Battle of Torrington, the Gaffley Clouds would prove to be a devastating weapon to use against the Zion remnants. Back in UC94, Two Gaffley units, regular models and possibly the additional units we mentioned before, appeared on Earth in the possession of a Titan's remnant group called Devil Nest. These units would be fielded alongside surviving Umbra Bees and were engaged by a mass production Zeta on double Zeta Gundams belonging to the Earth Federation Mariana Base forces. After UC-96, the Gaptley legacy started to fade, and by the late Universal Century, the Gaptley was all but a distant forgotten ghost from the Grips era. This was until UC-169. As the age of the spacing warring state raged, the new organization Relic Zytree, Zabizion, recovered an almost intact Gaptley unit, possibly Unit 3, which Jared had abandoned almost intact. Lacking means to produce something better, Zabizion bastardized this wreckage with parts of their own conception and created a new mixed build, the Gatrello. Yet another trashy mixed build of Cruzbone Dust, the Gatrello not only used Gaptley parts, but also a whole set of armor resembling the Zacrello. Now, we know thanks to the auto notes that these Zacrello parts aren't from an actual Zacrello, but are reproduction parts which are mobile suit sized. These downsized parts, combined with the Gatrello transforming mechanism, enable the mobile suit to transform into a mobile armor mode resembling the original Zacrello. This mobile suit was supposed to fight alongside another mixed build we saw in other videos, the Sand Dog and was supposed to carry the offensive to enable the sand dock to capture the exhausted enemy. Together, the two mixed builds served as the defense unit of the Ducal Palace of Zabizion, 
and quite surprisingly, both were piloted by mercenary soldiers rather than Zabizion cronies. During the events of Cruzbon Dost, the Gatrello would be pitted against Cyclops Gundam, the Phantom V2 custom, and despite attempting to fight back, the fight ended quickly with the Phantom ramming the Sandok into the Gatrello, destroying them both. This combat would be the last of the entire Gaffney line, closing its legacy once and for all. And we have now completed today's topic, and I hope you will like it. This will be all for today's video, but stay tuned for future lore content delivered on the same channel. Hit the like button, and most importantly, comment and subscribe as it will really help the channel to flourish. So long fellow new types, until the time of our next special edition.